TV here for the press conference for Dillian White, Oscar Rivas ahead of July 20th show. Also on the bill, got Dave Allen and David Price in their heavyweight showdown. Fortunate to be joined by a uh, former middleweight champion, uh, Darren Barker. I know I always introduce it like that, but it's good to also uh, yeah, please nostal- do. a bit of nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I still can't believe it. How are you anyway, Darren? Yeah, I'm well, thanks. Nice. Um, all good, busy, but. Uh, can't complain. Yeah, coming down here, obviously a very kind of humble press conference today. Uh, Oscar Rivas mm. over with a very credible resume. Yeah. Um, the next test in Dylan White's career. As from looking out from the outside, I know you've got uh, your focus on Dave Allen's on the build. Yeah. Um, what kind of do you expect from Oscar Rivas? Have, have you kind of potentially uh, seen him? Yeah, for- I'm, I remember him in the amateurs. Um, I didn't, you know, he was a heavyweight, so I didn't keep uh, a great deal of concentration on him but I know he can fight he's a very good fighter he comes with uh, a lot of confidence and to be honest um, being the underdog which he is uh, takes a lot of pressure off so um, I'm expecting him to you know turn up and, and make a very good fight at this yeah last time out of Dave Allen uh, Lucas Brown very kind of good fight for Dave at that kind of phase of his career former WBA uh, world champion and sort of assessing his performance mm. um, touching it with him the the public kind of demand uh, the excitement factor that carries over no matter kind of what stage you are in your career at kind of heavyweight especially with the whole sort of uh, public demand the way things uh, accelerated um how impressed were you with uh, dave's performance and what third you- round i was third round i was i wasn't the first two because he didn't move his head as much as i wanted him to when he started doing it the openings present themselves to you and uh, that's the one of the main things you know it's not just missing the shot it's about you do it fast enough, the openings are there, and he just didn't do it in the first two rounds. But that's due to him being a slow starter. He, you know, he just doesn't start quick. So that's another thing I want to get him doing. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be throwing loads of punches to be a fast starter. It's about switching yeah. on, finding your time and your distance early, and you'll have to do that against David because he can whack. Yeah. You know, and you know, you heard it there. He'd love to be the first to to knock Dave Allen out. So Dave's gonna have to be really, really switched on. And yeah, look, I, I was happy though. Yeah, I was happy with the with the with the victory. Yeah. Obviously, you know, it's a massive win for Dave. And you see what it meant to both of us. And it's nice when you're working on something, it actually comes off. Yeah, and obviously David Price brings a sort of a new set of uh, attributes, uh, the next progressive step in uh, Dave's career. But also, kind of having touched on those big uh, fights with the likes of Dillian White. Um, and various other kind of uh, tough fights that he's had with that kind of limited um, upper body elusive movement, maybe the the, the head movement that you're looking to work on, obviously having the tutelage that you bring um, to to camp. Um, Is that kind of a, do you look at that as a detriment possibly in terms of stepping up to the kind of the elite? Yeah, absolutely. The art of boxing is to hit and not be hit. I took him on. Here he is, look. It's about hitting and not being hit. Um, So yeah, therefore you need to be sharp and move your head and that's um, that would be something I'll be working on for the next 11, 12 weeks or however long it is. He's going to have to be on it. You know, it's not about. I think the only thing, one of the most important things in boxing is speed. You know, timing is huge, but you can't teach timing. Uh, but speed's crucial. And when I say speed, I don't just mean speed of punch. I mean speed of your your footwork, your head movement. You know, to be able to get out of the range, out of range to to miss shots, but also to get into range. You know, you don't want to be arms length for David Price, so you're gonna to have to be quick at getting close to him. Yeah. So yeah, it's gonna be uh, uh, something we're working on. Yeah, and obviously, kind of topping the bill, uh, Dylan White um, again against uh, Oscar Rivas, um, trying to solidify his position to get a mandatory spot. I know it's kind of all a bit of a, a mess at the moment with the heavyweight landscape, but even then, touching on um, Jarrell Miller's failed drugs test, yeah. what's your perspective on the kind of whole substance manipulation? Ban them for the life. Sport? Ban them for life. Simple as that. Um, when I was an amateur, you had a book about that fat with every banned substance in it, Mike. Mate. Um, Mike Goodall does all the rings. Yeah. Um, I yeah, you had a big big book with all the um, banned substances, and if you're unsure, you went in the book and you uh, you made sure you didn't put that substance in your body. So there's no excuses. Get this book. 
or get banned. Simple yeah. as that. Simple as that. Do you, you think know? the regulatory bodies, perhaps the likes of VADA, why they need to kind of narrow their um, substance guidelines throughout the sport, the grassroots tier? Perhaps, right you, know, I th- you know, the logistics of it and the rules, etc. I'm not that up to date on if I'm deadly honest with you, but quite simply, don't put any of that crap in your body. If you're unsure, look at the book and the the governing bodies or whatever, whatever it is or whatever you want to call them, yeah. they, they need to have tougher sentences. You know, if, if a fighter knows you're going to get banned for life, I'm pretty sure they, they'll think twice about doing it because the punishment's so great. So ban them for life. Yeah, and um, on the same night we had Terence Crawford defend his WBO uh, welterweight yeah. title against Amir Khan. Uh, what was your take on the the fight and kind of where do you see uh, Terence particularly in terms of the 147 pound landscape um, at world level? The likes of uh, Errol Spence, Sean Porter, Danny Garcia, all fights looming around. Yeah, I'd love to see Spence um, the Spence fight. I mean, what a fight that would be! Uh, there's a lot of respect there. I see um, a little bar- argy bargy they had backstage a few months ago. Was it a year ago or something like that? And, you know, they respect each other, but there's, there, it would be fireworks. I love that fight. I really do. Um, I think Spence is signed to fight Porter. Yeah. Is that right? Um, so, yeah, he'll have to get past Sean Porter, who we know is ferocious and doesn't stop throwing punches. But Crawford's win against Khan was good, and um, it was a, a solid performance up until the weird ending. You know, Khan done very well getting up after that heavy knockdown. Um, when you see a fighter's leg buckle like Khan's do, they usually stay down, but he got up, so hats off to Khan. Um, but it was a strange ending, but up until that ending, it was a good, solid performance. Do you think the sort of manner in terms of the, the way um, Amir uh, lost to Crawford, and it was in the fight, always kind of does uh, with the volume of shots that he throws early on to kind of let his opponent know that he's there, centre of the ring, hold his feet, but also with Crawford's kind of movement, his elusiveness around um, in terms of like the, the Brook fight, obviously everyone's talking about the public demand behind that fight, yeah. the, the regret that potentially that, that fight didn't get taken. Is there any sort of, um, do you have any sort of view of the performance that he had uh, on uh, April 20th about kind of maybe not taking, wanting to take that uh, Brook fight eventually? Or do you it, think that fight still sense, kind of... It? it made sense because, you know, it's, uh, there was a world title on the line. It was one, one against arguably the best pound for pound fighter out there. For less money, yes, but it, there was more put on the table for, for Khan. That, the Brook fight will never happen. It, yeah. it won't happen. It's a fact. You know, I'll be shocked. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Darren, I appreciate nice you. Nice one, mate. I'll go over there. Thomas Thomas, Thanks. TV. Darren Barker. All the best, thanks. No worries. Thank you.